Not to go Aaron Rodgers, but R-E-L-A-X, <laughs> Warrior fans. Number one, Golden State, the reigning champs, came off a tough, long, emotional seven-game series, had very little time to prep or rest for this game. The Lakers came in with two days of additional rest, a huge deal for LeBron, a huge deal for AD. In fact, last night was only the third time all season that LeBron and AD both played simultaneously 40-plus minutes. The Lakers' stars were rested. They had a nice game plan. Let's be honest. Golden State didn't even have a defensive game plan, and they jacked 53 threes. They didn't have much of an offensive game plan. They've done this before. They let the series come to them. So that's number one. You got a rested, focused, underdog Laker team with a real game plan. Number two is the Lakers are going to shoot more free throws in this series. Why? Because they led the NBA in free throws. Why? Because they initiate contact. Why? Because they can't shoot. It's a really, really limited offense. And Golden State let them do what they wanted to do last night. Nobody's out to get the Warriors. Nobody's trying to push the Lakers past anything. The Warriors were last in the league in free throw attempts. And on a night without much of a game plan, Jack and 53 threes, that's what it looks like. A massive free throw disparity. Now, that said, you got to make Anthony Davis at least work for it. But again, Looney only played 29 minutes. Draymond Green in foul trouble only played 34 minutes. The Warrior Stars, Wiggins didn't play very much, 33 minutes, and he was awful. So you got to put more length on the floor. They will. The Warriors will. You got to get the Lakers moving in transition. They will. You got to get the pace faster. They did a little bit in the second half. They will. And the third thing, the Warriors adapt better than any team in the league. They were in trouble against the Celtics last year, went to Boston and won. They were in trouble against Sacramento, went to Sacramento and run, won. That's what they do. Steve Kerr is worth a game in this series. He was against Mike Brown. He was last year, and he will be in this series. Now, I didn't pick Golden State to even get to the finals this year because it's a lopsided offense. It's too Steph dependent. If Steph scores 31 points or more, they're 4 0 in the playoffs. Less than that, they're 0-4. The plus-minus is absurd. With Steph on the floor, they are plus 57. Without Steph on the floor, they're minus 47. This team is overly Steph-dependent, which was better in his prime, but he's 35 years old now. You're not getting a game seven. You're not going to get him as good on fewer days rest or when he's facing a very rested team. The Lakers came out through long Jared Vanderbilt and others at him, got him off his game. That's why Jordan Poole had so many open shots and took them. But the Warriors have no interior scoring. I believe J-Mac and I have discussed this for months. I believe they will address it in the offseason. Looney's a great rebounder, but there is not a big guy in the league that has less offensive skill. He has no game. So now, did the Lakers, have they met their match? Well, they did last night. Have they met their match with a dominant, healthy, big now AD playing his best? Perhaps. But my feeling is game two, equally rested. AD played 44. LeBron played 40. Warrior starters closer to 33, 34, 35 minutes. Looney 29. Game two, you'll get a different energy from the Warriors. They'll play with more desperation. They'll have some sort of defensive game plan. I don't know what that was. Once Draymond got in foul trouble, that wasn't much defense at all. LeBron said after the game, quote, the Warriors play like roadrunner. You've got to get your rest. The Warriors didn't have any. The Lakers had over two days extra rest. It's not an excuse. It's a reason. This team adjusts. But Anthony Davis is going to have a great series. We have predicted it. It was better than I thought, but it should be noted. I'll get to this later. Look at his second half efficiency compared to his first. He wore down and historically has. Okay, so Joel Embiid, uh, a lot of people rooting for him to win the MVP. He's a funny guy. He's been great. Big personality. He's good for the league. He won the MVP. 
Now, he only played 66 games, but there's a precedent. Years ago, Bill Walton, decades ago, won the MVP, MVP and Bill Walton played um, like 57, 58 games. There's a precedent. But it did feel like it was as much about an anti-Jokic vote as it was a pro Embiid vote, didn't it? Jokic is off-brand. He's not vertical or flashy. He's not fun or fashionable. He's not on IG. He felt completely out of place at the All-Star game. It was embarrassing. Embiid is the NBA brand. Big personality. Funny. Big game. Dunks up and down the floor. He's a fun watch. The league and the voters did not want to give dull and efficient Jokic a third straight MVP. MJ didn't get one. Either did LeBron. But it's not that Embiid won. It was a landslide. 73 votes to 15. Wait a minute. I was lectured for years about the triple-double. That's why Westbrook won. How valuable the triple-double was. Over and over, nauseating the value of the triple-double. I said, if it was so big, why don't we talk about Oscar Robertson? If it's so great, then why isn't Russell Westbrook a winning player? On and on, I was lectured about the value of the triple-double. Well, that's kind of Jokic's thing. That's his department. He averages basically a triple-double. Apparently, it doesn't matter anymore. Hmm. I've been told analytics are everything. I have scoffed at that. I have for years said analytics are great, and for the regular season, the volume game, I get it. Get to the playoffs. We saw it last night. Bigs beat smalls. Twos can beat threes. Rim protection, resiliency, basketball IQ means a lot more than I shoot more threes than you. But I was told by the experts, the value of analytics are everything. Well, Jokic has better analytics. PER, win share, <laughs> all those things I've been told are so valuable and that I've rolled my eyes at. So, for the record, triple doubles now don't mean much, right? Analytics are only part of the story. Okay, that's what I said for years. This was not a vote just for Embiid. It was a vote against Jokic. Jokic was part of a number one seed. He played more games, more rebounds, better analytically, the triple-double. And the vote was 73 to 15. I'll say what I said with Westbrook. NBA voters, and this is fine. I'm not outraged by it. They vote on stories and who they like and what's the better narrative. And in that case, it's Embiid. He is more fun. He's more on brand. He's a joker. He's a fun, active player that can do so many things. He's got a little bit of shack, a little bit of wilt, and I'm happy for him, right? But be careful in life for all you politicos and all you sports experts, what you lecture all of us small voices on. Triple-double is everything. Okay, okay, okay. Apparently not. Analytics are so valuable. I rolled my eyes. Apparently not. It's not that Embiid won. It's that it's as if Jokic didn't play more games. Or really, if you look at all the stuff I'm told that's so valuable, didn't really stack up. Oh, he did and more. I can be happy for Embiid. I really am. And, and Philadelphia's fun. That win the other night, Harden, Maxi, Harris, Doc, I like Daryl Moore. I like Phil. I mean, I don't I don't trust them in big spots, but they're fun. They're good for the league. But this vote did feel just as much anti-Jokic as pro Embiid. Now I do think in the history of the league, it is important for people like Joel Embiid to get an MVP. I do. I wish he played more games. I wish Jokic was represented a little more fairly. But I do think it's valuable. It's hard to tell the story the last 20 years of the NBA without Joel Embiid. I do wish his team was the number one seed Jokic was. I do wish he would win more in the postseason, but Jokic has neither. So I'm not anti-Joel Embiid. I mean, he's very, very valuable. But that triple-double thing, for about two years, I was told the value of it. I roll. Now, apparently, it doesn't mean that much. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.